Welcome to Channel Support. Every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Here, me and a couple of other YouTube friends will get together and talk about YouTube things. On these chats, we do a variety of things, such as YouTubers talk to other YouTubers about their experience, small channel support, and an open panel at the end of the stream. These streams usually last for about 90 minutes. So if you're brand new here, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel because we do these streams weekly and we'll dream to try to support as many channels as possible. Thank you. Hello and welcome to small channel support, everyone. This Sorry about that, but yes, this is your weekly hub for some entertainment, meeting some other small channels, and getting your subscribers count up and watch hours up organically, and meeting amazing people on the chat. So we're just going to wait for my co-host to come in. I believe he's going to come in any minute now. I send him the email, and at the end of the chat, I'm going to allow anyone who's currently in the chat to come up onto the stream and tell us about their channel. That this, it, their, frick, their term up here will last for 5 to 10 minutes, but I'll usually announce when the end of their term is, so yeah, it's just a couple of rules, if you want, like, rules about, like, basic things, they're in the description, but, like, who actually reads descriptions anymore, but yeah, we're live, we're doing this tonight, we're gonna be doing some small channel support, we're gonna be spotlighting a couple channels, this is all about you, this is all about getting you up to your goals, that what you really want to get up to, so, yeah, I hope y'all are ready to have some fun, we're gonna do a little bit of this tonight, we're gonna do a lot of work on... I'm building each other's channels up to their fullest potential, and tonight we're also going to be talking about tips and tricks. We're going to talk a lot about haters and what they and what they do to their channel, other implications as well. We're going to be educating you on everything you need to know about YouTube. So, yeah, that's what that's basically what we're going to be talking about in this stream. So, we're also going to be educating you on helping on getting watch hours and other th things like that. And also, hopefully convincing you to not buy views and subscribers, because doing that, I think we all know what the implications of doing that are, so. Hopefully my audio quality is half decent, I'm gonna check. Looks like my audio quality is half decent, good. So, we are going to begin now, we're gonna start off by talking a little bit about video view counts and what they mean. So, when a video gets views, it's always because of certain implications, such as... I mean, implications really has, like, nothing to do about that, but, like, you get what I'm trying to say here. So, basically, when a video gets views, it's always because of one source or something like that. And, uh, yeah, it's really hard to get returning viewers, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We are here to talk about the more important things rather than view counts, because those don't matter. Subscriber counts don't matter. Revenue count doesn't matter. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is your journey and talking to your viewers, making sure that they have at least half decent time on your channel because making sure they have the best possible time on your channel is what really makes the growth on your channel special a lot. So I'm waiting for my co-host to appear on the thing here. I have a notification sound so that way like that so that way that would like notify me. So what's going on? Micro farmer. So yeah, I think I sent you that with the email. I don't know. Um I don't know if you received it. I think you responded to it because I saw it and I think I responded. I mean like I'm starting to forget a lot of things, so yeah, you're here, that's good to know, good to hear that. My internet quality has not taken up the stream yet, because it's done that before. Did that, um, not on Thursday, that was my fault, I ended the stream because, well, because there was really nothing too special about that. So what's going on, Everyday Life, no CDs, chick, welcome into the chat this evening. Alright. Oh, so what up, I'm already here. Hey, Nikki, what's going on? Is I'm live, I'm alive. Hello? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I can't hear you. That's fine. All right. All right. All right. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> Continue. So tonight we're going to be talking about supporting small channels, getting people up, talking about that, talking about people's experience. And at the end, we're going to have a little bit of an open panel and we're going to host this together each week. Actually, the, I think the co-hosts are going to change, but I bet you you're going to be my go-to host if I can't find anyone else to go on because, you know, it's really hard to find people that will actually be doing their stuff out on these YouTube streets nowadays because you know how hard it is because people have like work jobs school and stuff like that so yeah all right that's good to know good to hear that my audio quality is better than usual because you know I love hearing that I'm no longer calling people I'm, I'm love hearing that people are no longer like experiencing like like an absolutely like egregiously loud sound on their ears so <clears throat> there are a couple things we could do. We also, oh, I just hit my foot on my desk, so that hurt a little bit. But we're also going to be spotlighting some channels. We're going to be dropping the links in the chat. And 
Yeah, is there a couple of ch is there like a channel you want to spotlight on this chat show tonight? Because like there's a lot of channels on my list of spotlighting tonight. I don't know about you. But yeah, I have a little bit of a list tonight and yeah, yours is on here. Thank you. Pretty. <laughs> all the, all I, mean, I have right now tonight is um uh, oh man, I, I even have a list, man. I gotta look at stuff now. But right off my head right now is a young couple that's doing a thing on Instagram, but they came over to YouTube is um they're called Love at First Sight. Um, instead of saying sight like eyesight, it's S I T E. So it's Love at First Sight as like a website. Yeah. So that's big. Um, that, but I haven't. There's a few channels I ain't gonna. Yeah, it's a few channels I wanted to. Well, I wasn't prepared to put no channels on that, but that's the one that came on top of my head right now. All right. So, at First Sight, yeah. So I believe are are they at like six hundred something subscribers right now? Because um I have to like look them yeah, up on like be, social yeah, media. It's a young couple that they have. Um, right. Yeah. I think I found it. Okay. So I'm gonna drop them in the chat. They're at six. Ah, crud. I am. I'm screwing a lot of things up tonight. Yeah, I, I was. I just kept clicking Command Z, which would just send me back multiple URLs. So I'm dropping them in the chat really quickly. So. That That's should be it. it. Should be. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, I see you. I'm, I'm watching you. I'm, I'm glad that you are picking up the, um, the torch and um, helping other channels come up. Because remember, like where I met you, you was a small channel. And I know you used to be worried about getting up there and surpass me. And that's, I love that part about you. You're getting out there. You're showing people like, the shorts and all that stuff and just pushing mm -hmm. in lives. Even if you don't have 60 people in your life. Still go live. Still keep pushing. Yep. And that's what you're, about. you're pushing it. And you actually recently hit 1,500 subscribers, so congratulations on that. I remember, I think it was Monday last week. I remember it was snowing a bit over here. I don't know if you got that snow last Monday. I think we got like three inches. So, like, I remember I was sitting at a restaurant that night, and I pulled up your channel, and I was like, oh, you were at 1,500. And then your video, I think it was um your little introduction to your farm, micro farm. Yeah was at like 600 views at the moment. Now it's at 863, but I think congratulations on it either way, but yeah. that's a nice video. I watched it all the way through. It was really thorough and I enjoyed it. Yeah, that that's the funny thing about like YouTube at this point in time is that you don't know what video, you don't know. I mean, unless you do word playing, um, otherwise you wonder why one video do so well and the other wasn't, the other one don't. So I'm thinking, um, it's just it's a hit and miss with me. It's a hit and miss. It's just, but then I don't, I don't. Some people actually watch the like the stock market. They watch how YouTube works with the hour. Certain times you um, release a video, like the everyday, everyday, um, the everyday life of OCD. Tick. Most of the time her video drops around twelve or one o'clock in the morning. Now that might work for her. I didn't analyze her numbers why she drops them, but most of her videos drops at the midnight hour and early morning hours. Yeah. Um, is that something that you have learned that, um, that you, um, you found out is a certain time you're supposed to drop a video or something like that? Have you analyzed that since you're, you're pushing up the shorts and you're doing a lot of other little things? Yeah. Do you find that there's a certain time that you get more traction in your videos when you, cause I see you've been hitting those one K's like on your, your, um, shorts. So is there a certain time you drop them? Uh, usually I drop them at um, the early to mid evening hours. That's when they, for some reason, do really good on my channel. But as for like long uploads, um, m the grand majority of my viewers are on at about two o'clock p.m. So like, that's what I'm thinking about actually starting to post them at like two, three o'clock p.m. That's when a lot of um, that's when a lot of my viewers are on. So usually I like to take notes of that. But a lot of them, a lot of like the new viewers are gonna be on like in the evening because you know. The shorts algorithm, it's always people like scrolling through on like a phone or their PC with their mouse and just scrolling down. So what happens is like a lot of people are like like once maybe like high school students, they, they just finished up with like their homework. They need to like chill out, like watch some shorts, like go down for like an hour or two and watch them. Oh. That's like the time period, like six to eleven PM is like when like a lot of us finish up our homework. So like it's like we go out there and we start like watching shorts. So that's when it comes down to it. That's if you want to reach that target audience, then it's that. If you want to reach like more of an older target audience, the same thing. Like you're usually early evening hours. Like you know, they finished up their work. They need to chill out before they get a little bit more done. So that's what it is, right there. So like six to eight p.m., maybe eight to twelve a.m. 
p.m. to a.m. That's that's a pretty good time for my channel. But then occasionally I have that one random video that'll blow up when I'm sleeping. Like there's a video got up to 11 views while I was awake, and then I decided to chill out. Like you know I'm lazy on the weekends, so I like get up at like 11 a.m. I was sleeping. I woke up at 11. And that video was at 2,000 views, and like it blew up at like what well, like I think oh, it blew so up at 6 a.m. So Nikki said she has changed her uh, uploads to noon now. Um, yeah. My video views are better at noon. Also, Sundays are a great day to do uploads. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like just last night, I got a video out. It's at like 30 something views, I think, right now. Now, here are the thing they keep removing the views. Like, it was at 70. And like, like, as soon as I post them, the initial 20, 30 views are all from like people coming in from like the subscriptions tab. And then for some reason, like, I'd like post them in the comment section on my short and those get deleted. It's, it's all about like hit or miss. And they always delete my views. Like, I always delete like 20 or 30 of them, which isn't a big deal. I just rebound from that. It's not a big deal. Like, here's the thing. You don't want to cry about your analytics because like crying about your analytics is, is not going to get you anywhere. So you want to make sure you're, you, you want to use your analytics to sort of analyze where the views are coming from and how they work. You don't want to take like a ridiculous deep dive in your analytics and like, oh my, this video got 33 dislikes on it. I'm never going to make that sort of content. No, that video just because I got 33 dislikes doesn't mean that it's like that big of a deal. Like you always got to make sure you're using your analytics responsibly and not neglecting them, not abusing them because abusing it's basically like abusing power because like you're looking at them. You're like, you're constantly looking at them. You don't want to be like, like addicted to them. You want to be like looking at them maybe once or twice a day and analyzing where the views are coming in. Maybe when like a video is blowing up, you don't want to like look at them like every second of every day, because like, that's the thing. A lot of people are going to end up doing that. Because I, I realize when I look at analytics and I look at where people's watching my videos, I'm getting a lot of more traction in India. Like on like certain shorts and certain videos, most of those views you see on them high views is from India. Yeah. Like oh, they're not even from the United States. They're more on a situation where they're only like watching maybe 45 seconds to 50 seconds of that video or short. Um, it's just something that, like I said, it's the wordplay for them over the other countries. Because like I said, I get more people watching my videos from India, but they're not subscribed to me either. They just yeah. it hits them around. If it's morning time, whatever I drop, it must be afternoon or lunchtime where they at because I get a lot of hits from, from India. Yeah, India is my second country where I get a lot of views from. I get um, I get about sixty-two percent of my views from the U.S. and then like I think eighteen percent from India then 4% from Indonesia, then Vietnam, South Korea. Some of those, you know, not surprising ones like India and Indonesia are like really big con countries for that. So, yeah, there, there's going to be like a lot of views coming from those places. Now, this is just a, just an opinionated situation here. Do you feel when you see that? Because I was, I don't know, it would be an insult to people or not. Like when you see like India and like you said, you know, certain areas, would you in like, do influences of their culture in your video or your short? Usually not. Usually what you want to do is you want to keep making the shorts that you like, and then YouTube's going to sort of, like, find the audience. I mean, like, if you have, like, like if you're, like, maybe, like, from that general area, maybe you have, like, descendants from that area, maybe you could do it sort of. But, like, that's only if, like, you're getting, like, 90% of your views from that place, and you have descendants that are from there. But, like, usually it's not totally offensive, but it could be in some circumstances. That's another thing I want to talk about tonight. Don't piss off everyone on the, these YouTube streets. It's so easy to get on people's nerves, you know, anger them. Maybe in a joking manner, like, that's fine. But, like, saying, like, absolutely blatant, like, rude stuff about them is, like, not okay. It's like when you get a hate comment. I don't know if you've ever gotten hate comments on your channel. I get a couple here and there. I don't get more, I get a few emails. Uh, everybody know who I am. They know they come at me correct off the rip. I'm coming back 3,000 shots more back. But So I tend to get the more respect of anything, like, I know how to handle my own. Like some people just don't have that that character, or they just don't have that that. But yeah, you just gotta establish yourself. Like you know, yeah. I, I just I choose. I'm trying not to get into that world no more. Where I used to wear fly off the handle, and I'll call your name out. Don't give a hoop. I could lose ten thousand subscribers. It wouldn't even matter to me. Yeah, I, I just got off my chest what I need to say. That's why I, you know, like I always. Say, um, 2023 for me and the end of 2022, I was just done with the drama. Like, um, 
I just come to find out people are sensitive. Um, doesn't matter, male or female. It's just that people are, to me, is unhappy with themselves. And and they, some, some people is into the negative vibe. Like, if you're a negative state of mind, everything you hear is going to be negative. You you know, yeah. I just learned that, you know, dealing with hands of dirt and Nikki. And like I tell people, I was in that state of mind sometimes. And it would just be negative. And then anything that came across you, you just took the negative side of it instead of the positive. And I realized me being going through that three times already on YouTube, I have learned like, you know what, people are gonna be who they are. Um, if people put the negative stigma in your back of your head and you start living life negative, yeah, you're gonna be negative. You're gonna anything somebody say to you, you just can hear your name and you you already assuming negative stuff is being said about you, you're running with it. But I've been there. That's what I'm saying. I've been there as YouTube. Some people are gonna get burned out by September. You will see a lot of channels gone. It ain't by choice either. It's just gonna be gone. Yeah. Gonna get burned out. They're gonna they don't wanna do it no more. It's not fun no more. And they're gonna realize you're getting burned out because after a while, you don't reinvent yourself. You're gonna be an old sitcom. You're gonna get canceled in this much because a lot of people don't know how to reinvent themselves. You go to some of these channels, they're saying the same stuff over and over and over again. It's yeah. not about the channel. You go over, you know exactly what you're going to get. You're going to get the same stuff they said two weeks ago. It's just they got about four subjects and they re and they rotate them. Yeah. Now we just need to learn to live with these types of people because, like, there's nothing oh, we can do. I ain't got to live with them. That's a lie right there. I ain't got to live. I just don't watch them. Uh, yeah. I ain't got to live with nobody, but as a matter of fact, I ain't even got to live with the woman I'm married to. I get divorced and get about my business. You ain't got to live with nothing. You ain't got to live with nothing. Especially somebody that don't put no money in your pocket. You ain't got to live with them at all. You just push them on to the way. Keep pushing. Keep it out of the way. You know? yeah. so never think that you got to, you just got to live with the nonsense that's going on around here. But yeah. yeah, never put yourself in that position, Phil, like you got to just deal with people BS. You don't like I said, people that left microphone. You know what I'm saying? If they don't like my BS, keep it moving. I'm good with it. I'm cool mm -hmm. with it. Trust me, you taking a you taking a dump tomorrow and you, you watching your butt. And I don't have no effect on y'all lives. Like nobody lives and you no effect. Yeah. You know, only a lot of people actually like the daughter's, the, the daughter's yeah. wife upstairs. That's the only people I have effect on. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like to use that. Like like they always take like these things like very seriously. Like they like respond to comments with like extremely offensive words, words like I wouldn't even say like ever, yeah. and like words I wouldn't even hear people right. ever say. Like these people are like that. You got you got to learn like that. Like some people are not always gonna be like not not all people are gonna be like um the nicest people on earth. Like some people are gonna hate your content. But at the end of the day. Everybody's not for everybody. Help the help the small channels like I try to do. Help the small channels, um, like people like Nikki, Hands in the Dirt, Broke Farmer, Lead Farmer, Seventy. I don't need to push those people because they already doing their thing. They already they know the, the mathematics on how to grow. You have learned how to do the mathematics of growing your channel. Like I said, I've been around a lot of these YouTubers where they didn't they like you. You wasn't there when I was there before you even cracked two hundred. You know what I mean? To yeah. where you know surpass me, like like, and you doing your thing, and that's what I say. I'm proud of everybody. I'm, I'm proud of everybody that I came across, and you can surpass me. And I don't because YouTube for me is not my money maker. It's not so any YouTube a new person that wants to get into YouTube, just be yourself, and your people are going to find you. Don't go yeah. don't, don't go liking somebody or disliking somebody because somebody else liked them or dislike them. Like the person or dislike the person for what you believe in, what you feel is your truth. You know, oh, I don't like him because he does this. And you go, well, I don't like him either then. Wow, you didn't make your own decision. Yeah. And unfortunately, like a lot of people don't like care about this advice. And for any like, like I know, there's a lot of people that come in after the replay. For anyone right now watching the replay, mm -hmm. don't... Listen, like, maybe, like, listen to constructive criticism. Like, oh, this is a decent video. I wish you could improve on X and Y. Listen to that, because that's going to help you improve your channel. Like, that's actually how 
like someone actually gave me a little comment, like when my shorts was like slightly blown up, you know, 100, 200 views. Someone actually left a comment showing me how to actually do do it big with these shorts things. And he actually really helped me out. So a lot of comments will actually, so a lot of constructive comments at least will help you out. But if there's someone being like, oh, this content is a uh, garbage. Oh, yeah. you're, you're trash at making videos. Like, don't listen to those. Like, those are just there to attempt to make your day worse. Yeah. But when, you, but when I look at those comments, I just click a couple buttons and that comment's gone. No doubt about it. Like, I just block the user and that's it. Yeah. So that's, but if anybody like bigger channels is watching this and you have the opportunity to show people how to move their channel in the right direction, do so. I, that's what I do. I, you help. You only get help the people the way you feel that you're helping. Um, there's a lot of people out here helping channels to grow. They have their own methods. It ain't your method. It ain't my method. So think about it like that. Anybody that's out here listening to this on the replay, just help people the way you want to. Don't try to mimic what I do or anybody else doing. If you come up with an idea saying this is the way I can help a channel, small channel grow. Yes, true. The way I just start, I just was talking to him, hands in the dirt about certain things. I talked to a couple other YouTubers behind the scenes about it. Um, the way you get help is just mention people name because believe it or not, the AI is listening to all our conversation as we talk here in this live right now. AI yeah. picks up on keywords and they put it up. So if I keep saying hands in the dirt, Nikki are going hello to my hands in the dirt, you would say hands in the dirt, and everybody keeps saying hands in the dirt. What happened is it's going to pick up because right now we can talk about pantyhose on the cell phone, and by the, by the next 20 minutes, you'll get a bunch of advertisement about pantyhose. Because yeah. the guy is listening to what you were just having a conversation about. If you're having a conversation about toys and certain things, those things are going to pop up in your that, – that, that, that AI is going to pick up the conversation in your phone. So your phone conversation is not private. It might not yeah. be a to listen to you, but it's, it's an AI is listening. And when you talk about certain things and you realize why this stuff is starting to pull up your feet, because the AI is listening to your conversations. Be careful of listening to you, talking about on these phones now because the machine is picking up key words and that's what they're pushing out there. So if you don't believe me, talk, have a conversation and say S toys and guarantee your phone will be bombarded with advertisement for X toys. Yeah. It's just it's one of those things. Talk about McDonald's in a conversation and watch you see all the McDonald's commercials come up in your advertisement or coupons and stuff in your in your phone on your phone yeah like like one of my friends like we were look we were talking about like um mid colleges because you know college is a couple years for me mm -hmm. and like then all of a sudden we both started getting like absolute like hit with college ads like we don't need to start planning this out just yet like maybe in like a year or two we might want to start considering things but like not this early in the game like we just got started in this new school like we don't need to get that so that's how you use it. That's so since you know that, like they said in GI Joe, half knowing is half the battle, right? Knowing is yeah. half the battle. So if you know this is going on, so why not mention the everyday life of an OCH chick? You know what I'm saying? Why you don't yeah. say chicken in your videos and just say, I saw the chicken the other day, he was doing this because they're listening. So use the AI uh, with the AI. Let the AI help you help other channels by just speaking people names in your your videos on your lives and let that work for us but you know it is what it is yeah i mean there's nothing controlling there's nothing that's gonna like like we can't like control all the stuff like they're just gonna bombard us with ads about like this like topic x because like we talked about topic x for like 30 seconds is like maybe like your friends on our phone but there's no way of stopping them from advertising that to us because it's the AI. They they think they know it's right for you. So if they listen to your conversations, they get a little good detail thing about you. And like and then they like start like hitting you at the advertisements that are in that ring of things that you're constantly talking about. Yep. So if you constantly talk about hands in the dirt, OCDS chick, everybody in your phone conversation, if you talk to somebody. Chances are you're gonna if just say you say hands of dirt gardening or something like that, you're gonna get a lot of Miracle Grove, all these companies advertising some type of stuff with garden tools and stuff. You're gonna get all that. Like right now, once you drop this live, chances are the videos that's gonna be on the advertising on this live you do, 
will be about garden soil and stuff like that. You will see it pop up. Yeah. And like every time, like, like I remember a little bit ago, I had a, had a video where I talked about like supporting small channels. It got about a hundred views. And usually I notice a lot of things like usually about like a third of my videos since, you know, I'm not yet monetized. I don't know about you though, but like, like once it gets to a hundred views and you don't monetize that video, I mean, if you directly say it in studio, it shouldn't put ads, but like, since I have no control over those ads, when it's like at a hundred views, it throws an ad in there. And especially with these how to grow on YouTube things, what's going to like end up happening is you're going to start to see these ads. And there's going to be a lot of scam ads too. So keep that in mind. Not every ad is going to be leading you to a wholesome university. Some of these ads are going to lead you to things that are like going to scam you out of like two or three grand. Sometimes even leaking your bank account information on the line. Like I keep seeing those ads. Like, I don't know if you know the YouTuber Mr. Beast is. I think he has a hundred something million subscribers. But I keep seeing these fake ads like, oh, click this here and you'll win $2,000. Like, you really <laughs> expect me to click on that? Yeah, but people do because they don't know no better. You know, they click on and they computer get hacked and all kind of nonsense there. So yeah, they lose their banking information or like their parents' banking information. So unfortunately, a lot of people actually end up falling for these scam ads. So for anyone that's watching right now, watching the replay, if you see an ad that does not look official, like these guys will just like like these guys will literally just go into Google or search up like picture of Mr. Beast and like throw it on onto like a um like Photoshop or whatever they use for like their images and like put like the text on there says like I'm giving every person that clicks here like one thousand dollars. It's yeah. most likely a scam because like the YouTuber himself literally addressed the thing online. So if the YouTuber themselves like let's just say like there's a lot of people going around right now that are like trying to impersonate a lot of channels that are like, oh DM me on Telegram. Like if I see that comment once on my channel I'm definitely making a statement on it because like that would possibly like increase odds of like a lot of people getting mad because if they just get scammed out of thousands of dollars, possibly even their location. Cause a lot of these times, like I saw a video of a guy who was like playing along with that. So unfortunately like they'll possibly even end up losing like personal information, like their like home address, their city, their other stuff too. So. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but a lot of people, even tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people, get scammed every day because, you know, a lot of people that click on these ads are, like, mostly between the age of, like, 10 and 13, so, like, they're very enticed to click on it because, like, they don't know any better. They're very impressionable, so, like, what these ads are going to try to do is they're going to try to go over there, they're going to try to, like, find so, a target audience. Uh, now, how are you now? Have you seen your way? Because I know this ain't your first one to talk about helping small channels. Have you seen your influence help smaller channels than you that you worked with? Or yes, have I, okay. I've seen it help a lot of channels. I've seen, um, what did I just say? I've seen a lot of channels actually get, I think the most subscribers I've um, taken from a, a stream to a small channel was 17. So I've actually supported a lot of small channels in the past, and I'm going to keep doing it because I love giving back to the community. That I, The community helped me grow, so I help the community grow as well. When I'm bigger, I'm still going to keep doing these streams. I'm still going to be highlighting these channels. I'm still going to be like, you know, telling like, oh, I don't know, like Shifting Some Soil like supported me on like insert day here, and then like you are here on my stream this day, so... I'm always trying to support as many channels as possible around here. So your small support, like even if you just transmit two or three subscribers over to another smaller channel's channel, it's still supporting them a lot. Cause even sometimes when smaller channels, like sometimes you have smaller channels that gain like one subscriber every month or two, it really boosts your self-esteem. You wouldn't believe how much it does. So were you saying, okay, you help smoke. I know you was, I don't know. I know you reached out to me and you were telling me that, um, that where you can, um, cause I know you do a lot of, uh, stuff that I was doing. Cause I was, I ain't gonna lie. I was mimicking your ass about the, like, you see how you did the thing with, cause I get that from my, my daughter gave me, I got the app. Hold up. I can tell you the app right now. Cause my daughter just you use that app. I don't know if you're using the same app, but oh, let me go find the app that I'm thinking. I believe it's CapCut. Cap yeah, Cut I use it as well. Cap, CapCut and Tempo ad. Tempo, Tempo ad. Where you still have that thing you be having with those little sounds, or whatever, and you have those pictures of yeah serious places. Those videos work. Um, mm -hmm. So I learned following, seeing how you you do it, because like I said, 
I'm watching your stuff and I'm watching my daughter because my daughter did like a six second one and got like 14 over 14 K 14,000 and a half viewed on a six second short like on her channel and I'm like what the being back so now I did some of these shorts she, you know she helped me try to come up with ideas so when we went to California and Mexico and was on a plane and I was just get, put the video outside the camera because we were in the window seat and those videos did kind of well just to be night night vision on airplanes and stuff like that. You see the side, you see the, the safe lights and stuff like that. Those are cool and put a little music to it. So those work. Kids, you're not. Those work. Yeah. You know, it's just rare moments and fishing and water and just you, like, I can't wait till it snow up here, bro. Like, there's some spots that I know is going to be beautiful in snow. I just never you know, never filmed it before as well. I never did shorts either. You know what I mean? So yeah. I don't, like there's a haunted road over here is a famous, I'm like maybe no more than 10 minute drive away from this haunted road. There's a haunted road here in Connecticut. The most haunted road in Connecticut is right 10 minutes over this way from me. And people don't scared to drive that road. And, but it looks beautiful in the snow time when it snows, it's majestic. It's here it goes. It's weird. It's being nice because I've been there because I'm not scared of ghosts and stuff. I don't live one, right? But it looks beautiful when it snows. If you drive that road, people claim you know things happen to them and the car cuts off and and car won't start. They don't see things and I I never experienced that. Maybe they don't like me. I don't know, but I never experienced. But it's. But one thing I could tell you, I'm not going to even lie about it. It is very quiet. Like everybody talks about how, like they talk about, because I know you can, can you up the hill up there, but um, yeah. they always talk about like, like places that are haunted or some type of energy source there is very quiet. There's like no bird sounds, it's just quiet. And that's what trips me out because I, I be watching these shows, these documentaries, and these movies, and that place is just like the movies. It's eerily quiet, quiet. Yeah. It's like you're stepped into another dimension where it's just quiet. It's like you're in a dark room, like a dark room with no sounds in there, like a soundproof room is just quiet. But it's, it, it's at the same time, as weirdly, it sounds, it's peaceful. To, well, to me, it's peaceful. You know, it's like, yeah. It's like it, you leave it's like you leave this world or something for some reason. But yeah. So I'm starting to do shorts too. I'm starting really pushing out a lot of shorts. So if anybody who's a small channel that listen to this guy, um chicken, shorts is where it's going. Um, I don't think we'll there's gonna be only a select a few of us who are actually gonna get monetized for our short because you gotta have like what one million views or something like that. I think it's I think, ten million. Yeah, like what odds are you getting ten million views on a short? Unless you're a celebrity or something, you know what I mean? Or you got you gonna have to nail some phenomenal, catch something phenomenal like a car crash or some mysterious thing you're gonna have to catch that'll get people to come over there. Ten million views is a lot of views, y'all. Yeah. So especially if you're not a celebrity or you're not popular. So don't even think about monetizing no shorts no time soon if you can't get people on a live. It's just it's that ten that, that ten million views is like way out of the game. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to reach 10 million views easily. But like, they end up getting ridiculously demotivated and just like stop doing that. Now, the odds of, I don't, I don't know if you're monetized because like, I remember like you were, I think you used to do channel memberships. I didn't want to monetize because like I said, monetization gets you all jacked up. So if you don't monetize your channel because I don't need YouTube's money and I don't need nothing really from nobody. So I just didn't even fill out the application all the way. I, I halfway and I was like, yeah. And then they cut it down anyway. They took everything away. So I like, go ahead, keep it moving. So if I want to play some music, I want to say something, I don't even got to worry about it no more. Yeah. yeah. So like they took away your monetization from you? My videos now, my videos are not monetized. I think they took all the monetization of, um, I believe all the advertising. If you could pull it up, I think those are things that are no more monetized. Because I didn't fill out the application, you know, I didn't do the banking and none of that. I didn't do all that crap. I was like, I don't need it. Didn't need it. 
I personally yeah. didn't. So I don't even think I got the dollar sign no more. I don't even got the cash app, nothing like that. You know. But that's me. That's me. That doesn't work for everybody. I'm so sick of these um YouTubers out here pushing monetization like you know, monetization ain't nothing because half the times you you only gonna see a, a select a few people that's gonna show you exactly what they make, and is is nothing to write home or nothing to talk about, and yeah. they push it to sucker you in. That's like I remember back in the day when people had a, went to see a, a crappy movie, and they just wanted you to go see that crappy movie, and they told you the movie was fine because they didn't want to be the only idiots seeing that stupid movie. <laughs> yeah. So they, they suck at you to go in and spend your five dollars to see that whack movie because they just didn't want to be the person that seen that whack movie by themselves and get laughed at. I think that's the same way YouTube is doing now. You know, YouTube is like, yeah, YouTube's getting monetized, monetized. I just think use YouTube, YouTube as a, a tool to, to build your business. Forget about the monetization stuff. I mean, if it's something that you need to do, man, knock yourself out. Go go play with yourself. But reality is use it to promote your promote your business or your website or anything you selling or goods or whatever or product or you know a service you're doing you'll make more money forget about monetization and worry about getting censorship go for the gusto where you're using YouTube Instagram TikTok all these free 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 social media platforms to put traffic to your website bring that that stuff to your website or your LLC or your brick and mortar store but people don't they just quickly follow the followers worry about monetization getting pennies on a dollar yeah so if you are watching this the replay whatever you do like like in a monetization sounds like you're gonna be the new cool kid on the block but like in reality when you get like control over it it's not like it's not it i'm not even monetized and i already feel like when i get it in the future, it's gonna be so like underwhelming. So like I'm I'm already re in store for like making two dollars a month and stuff like that because you know it's very hard to actually make like decent money on it. So like you need to get like other like back. So that's why like YouTube's like a great way to make like secondary sources of money. Like maybe like maybe like enough to go to the Dollar Tree by the end of the month and buy a candy bar or two. Exactly. But like that's what because you gotta what make a hundred dollars before they even see anything. So I was like. If, you know, that that's the only thing I don't like about certain YouTubers and they pushing you into it like a cult where they pushing you for this monetization. Yes, a thousand one K is a milestone, like to let you know, but then you think about it. Are you really getting even half those people watching your videos? Are you getting half those people to make a comment? Are you getting half those people in your lives? So people could tell you about numbers, but at the end of the day, I look at a bunch of them. And I'm like, okay, you're at 4,000, 6,000 subscribers, whatever. But every time you do a live, it ain't nothing but 17, 25 people in it. I get the same stuff less than you. So yeah. bring value to yourself. It's not about, oh, well, I got 16,000. I got 4,000. I got 3,000. It doesn't even matter because I can go live and pop up and get the same numbers of people looking at my life every time like you do. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. So here it goes. It's just like the women say, does size really matter? The size of your channel doesn't really matter. And, and that's the part you got to ask yourself. Those are things that, you know, you want to tell YouTubers that's coming up, people that's new to YouTube and trying to get it going. Don't get focused on numbers because if you do, you, if you watch Dylan's Dylan, Dylan and G, well, I'm about to say mess the word up. If you do your homework and watch people and watch the way people move, you're going to realize, they, yeah, you want to be, oh, man, he got 5,000, 6,000 subscribers, but then go watch his lives. Go watch the comments in his videos. He's only getting probably 23 people maybe hit the thumbs up, maybe 105 thumbs up, maybe out of the whole darn thing, he only got two to 300 people viewing his videos. Um, the numbers don't add up. Even though, yeah, you got the subscriber, you're looking at the subscriber, the subscriber count don't mean nothing. Because then you can look at somebody who has 300 subscribers, but he got over 70, 80 thumbs up on his videos. Or he has just about 300 people viewed that, that, that video. So yeah. look at the numbers. You're like, numbers don't matter at this point in time. I am a number guy, but then I look at numbers. At, it's the way you look at the numbers. You know, bigger is not always better than yours. You can have a small circle and get more information out as a small channel than a big channel. 
you know? Yeah. Like I said, I'm popular in certain status. I'm popular. Like, but my popularity does not reflect my my, my count because I was just on um, Coach Mary's model thing. I'm saying you can go anywhere in YouTube at this point in time. Believe it or not. Go into certain sectors in YouTube. And I've been in all, basically all of them, even down to the weirdo crap. They heard of Microfarmer. They might not be yeah. subscribed to me, but they're going to be like, I heard of you. Because I go everywhere in YouTube because YouTube is just like a a, a, a smorgasbord of stuff. But if you stay in one little section, that's all you're going to be known in that little section. But if you go to certain channels, you go to certain niches, and they're going to be like, I heard the guy. I'm not subscribed, but I did hear of him. They heard of Microfarm. That's a fact because I go everywhere. I'm like Tupac. I get around. I don't stay in one spot. You know, I'm in a diving, the people that scuba dive, re- scuba dive recovery, um, um, people do magnet fishing, gardening, homesteaders, um, gamers, crafters, crocheters, um, just bad breaking new people. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I've been, I'm, I'm in, I've been over and I'm just going to say what I'm going to say. I've been over there to the racist community too. Both sides of the racism. Been, I'm over there too. Because I like to hear what's going on on the other side of that fence. I'm not trying to put my head in the sand like an ostrich. I'm over there with the 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 the, the other people. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm over there, and yeah, that part. And I be telling people like I'm everywhere, you know. And I don't hide myself. I'd be right over there like this. Like I'm looking down your joint. I'm looking. So that's how you grow your channel too. As a small creator. Get yourself exposed to whatever you want to be exposed to. If you don't want to be exposed to the stuff I've exposed myself to, don't do that. Keep yourself safe and limit your exposure to what you want to be exposed to. If you don't want to be exposed to a lot of drama and stuff like that, smoke people that bring the smoke. I'm over there also. That manosphere thing, I'm over there also. They they know who my because there's a couple of them like, who? Why is this guy a farmer? Why he's over here? Like, that's just a name. That's just that right there, just a name. That does that doesn't make me. That doesn't define who I am. You know, I, I've been on the smoke side of the fence too. Like the smoke people that bring smoke and fire to everybody. And I'm over there too. I'm known over there. Yeah. So definitely. So if you're a small channel, the way you're gonna get bigger is to put yourself in a positive spot. Go and don't limit to yourself of where you're gonna visit. Visit the craft people. Visit the knitting, the crochet. Um, visit scuba diving guys, um, fishermen, um, campers, RV, people that go on vacation. Um, there's so many niches that you don't have. It's not drama. They real good people over there. Like you probably stay away from the, uh, the racist groups, you know, um, those, what you want to call left wing, right wings, whatever they call these people. Stay away from those channels. <laughs> stay away from those. Um, yeah. because it can be overwhelming for some people. But I like to have being, you know, I like to have the information for myself. So I don't like to get third, third party information. I actually watch the news. I watch other news. Then I watch the stuff on YouTube. And then I have some friends on the outside in the real world on boots on the ground. So they let me know what's going down in their neck of the woods. And that's, that's how I get my information. And some stuff you got to keep to yourself. That's when you get some type of information, keep it to yourself. You know, so. Um. Things now, so how your chickens do? Are your chickens laying eggs still, man? Um, yes, they actually are. I actually got um good decent amount of eggs from my farm flock today. I actually went out there. I'm gonna release two videos. I filmed an egg collection and one, and another one, which is um because one of those eggs actually kind of looked like a golden egg. Because I don't know if you've ever heard of olive eggers. They like like ridiculously like the this cross between green and yellow eggs. So you sort of get like. Maybe like a golden tint to the egg, sort of, but like not like completely golden, but like it's still something that looked cool. And I, I'm gonna post it later today, of course. But like it, it looked absolutely stunning, and I liked it. But like, but like we have had a lot of issues recently with um, with a bobcat over here. We actually started um last week off. 
we got a bunch of bobcats over there. Bobcats, coyotes. Well, there's if you didn't see the deer video when I was walking Nadine, not Nadine, walking my pup inside the woods there. We we came across some white tailed deers. Um, we have bobcats that come past and the coyote comes past my front yard and they go into those woods that where me and my dog was walking through. So yeah, we, we caught that. I don't know if you saw that video of me walking her, and it was about maybe six or seven white um, white white uh white tailed deers and um they're in there yeah. bobcats are here uh we have a few sightings over here with black bears yeah black now, bears on their way down here yeah now here's the thing bobcats are ridiculously annoying now here's the thing about bobcats like what they'll do is they'll come in and there's actually usually only bobcats are like really like self-centered things like they only think about themselves and not others we actually have two bobcats that sort of hunt together with my chickens. But now, because my farm flock chickens are sort of dumb, and what they do is like they'll like sort of like escape, like, like little escape artists. They'll get out, and then like what happens? You have two bobcats. One of them is going to be near the chicken yard, waiting for one to come out, and the other one is if that one is if the main bobcat that's going to be doing the hunting gets like you know like injured or like mm. or like maybe like needs a little bit of help. And th then, like, the other bobcat will come in and help. Now, actually, we actually, I don't know if you know we have ducks. We have three of them. Oh. And they're actually one of my pet ducks. So, like, losing them is really hard. But because we've been getting so much rain, I don't know if you've gotten the rain we've gotten here. We've gotten yeah, almost two feet of rain. Yo, just cleaned out the moisture out of my coop. Yes, yeah, so what ended up happening was, like, the water was literally a river in my backyard. Um, the, it actually knocked over the fence, and I didn't pick up on it, so a bobcat just walked right into there and took, I don't know if you know my duck's name, so I have Captain Blackwing, what the duck is my Cayugas, and I don't know if you remember, but I told a little bit about what the duck, she was actually, like, almost nearly killed um, by a fox, and, like, like we found her in, in the yard, it even looked like, it kind of looked like she went through, like, cardiac arrest or something, but, like, she was just, like, absolutely, like, like, she suffered a lot of injuries on her neck areas, because that's where the fox grabbed her, and then, like, we, we nursed her back to health. She's okay now. She's um she got a little bit of white speckles on her wings. And then we have Captain Blackwing, who is a um who doesn't have any white speckles on her wings. Unfortunately, the fox came through and uh, took Captain Blackwing. And I mean, not the fox, the bobcat. It just it walked right in and walked right out. And I was actually editing a video at that hour, and like I heard the quacking going on, and I was like, oh crud! And I looked out the window. And I didn't see nothing, so I was like, "Yeah, they they must be going off of their little evening play, you know, because they're always like goofing around out there. They're like, oh, my my puddle's bigger than your puddle, and like they're like goofing around out there.' But like, unfortunately, it was actually like a bobcat. So like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that so gotta watch those things, you know. I tell people, what um, I was gonna ask you, I was gonna ask you something about chickens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go, chickens. There was go. The story about the people with the chickens um, with uh, the track supply um, program, um, the track supply brand. And I did a little yeah. short. I didn't go deep in it because I'm not being sponsored by Perina or track supply. I use both of them. So um, I've been using track supply, which is pride on um, pride products. And I had no issue with my chickens not laying eggs um, because I just believe it's being to my opinion. Once again, my opinion for anybody on the replay, I believe Perina is trying to sabotage Track Supply's brand due to the fact that it might be a whole lot of factors to this situation where maybe one of the manufacturing companies that they get their feed from have something wrong that they plant and nobody have checked them yet. Because it's a lot of plants where the bag, even though it says Track Supply bag, but it's not coming from one central area. Those bags are being shipped to a, a manufacturing company that, that makes probably other feed for other companies, but they are packaging as track supplies brand. It could be the same company that's doing it for Perina. It's just that I just feel that Perina has pushed a price sway up there to almost $20 a bag and track supply is still at $14. So if mm. I was at 19, I would sabotage the hate the chicken, man. Telling people over there, man, that they Bray brand is messing up your chickens and we'll compensate you on down low kick, kickback. And then because you have so much influence, everybody's running. Like you say, you put it on the Internet. People's just going to run with it as the truth. And I believe it's not true. What happened? So um, in the cabinet, I was getting. Oh, boy. Here we go. And then they came over and I was wondering. All right. It looks like there's a bit of background going on around there. So I'm like, I'm going to cover for like a couple of seconds real quick. All right. 
So yeah, like as I was saying, there's a lot of people out there that are like trying to sabotage you, and especially on these YouTube streets, especially because like. I'm f okay, I'm good. I'm good. No, my dog's actually about the dog. Yeah. You want to know if she can give the dogs a treat? I was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, our dogs and animals here get treats. So she was asking, could she give them a treat? Yeah. Now, like, here's the thing with my chickens. Like, they actually, like, beg me for treats. They'll chase me around the yard. Like, like what they'll do is, like, I'll be out walking on the outside, maybe having to go somewhere for, like, a second. Mm -hmm. And they follow me everywhere. And, like, they're so loud when they chase me. Like, you can literally hear the ground shaking. I don't know if your chickens do. I have 12 chickens there and two ducks. And, like, it's very rare, but, like, I, I sometimes, it's very rare when ducks do this, but, like, I'll go down to the basement, and I'll grab myself a nice little handful of mealworms. I don't know if you know what those things are. Like, the yeah. worms, chickens mm -hmm. will love them. Yeah. And then I'll walk out to the yard, and I'll open up my hand, and usually the chickens come. I don't know about the ducks, mm -hmm. but, like, most of the time it's just the chickens, but when it's worms, all the ducks come. If I had geese, they'd probably come. Like, literally every one of these things are coming over here to get the worms because like you know everyone except for the worms themselves like worms <laughs> all right <laughs> what's worms. going on casings 55 what's going on growing with hudson i know i missed a couple people here but you know what's going well, on everybody casing 55 growing i just didn't want to interrupt you but yeah but um yeah those are the things and oh that was the issue because i never had issues so i just made a quick video on that because i believe somebody's trying to uh, sabotage on um, track supply that's my belief but I personally have no issues of feeding my hens um, track supply product because it's, when I put it side by side, now Perina has a little darker tint, but it looks the same. But, you know, give and take from the manufacturers, it is what it is. But I learned track supply just don't get their supplies from one, one manufacturer. They only just change out bags. Like they'll say, we're going to put Bob's chicken feet. They're gonna run the bag out, right? They'll run probably a half a million bags yeah. of product, put it up out. Then they're gonna change the bags off to um to uh track supply brand, which is pride pride product, right? They're gonna run about another yeah. half a million dollars of that. It's the same product, it's just they have clients that they bag they feed up. So I'm assuming if it's happening, somebody wherever that story came from, maybe it's one of those manufacturers have not clean their machines correctly or they have gotten contaminated some kind of which way so it doesn't mean that track supply all over america has a bad feet it's just maybe that section section of the country once they could you know find a problem they probably will address it if it's true or not you know so i'm waiting for their pr person to come up and say hey we know the issue is coming from a manufacturer that products that we use from this company something went or went wrong in a product production process you know and um yeah that part but track supply products has been superior just as much as perina i mean it's just all your preference you want a name brand on um, brand feed or you want track supply fee or like maybe where you at i don't have it here but they have where feed stores that sell woke feet in no brand bag it's just a bag of feet with no name on it, it's just a fee company. Mm -hmm. You know, in that what that sack, there's no name. It's just a sack. You don't even know where it come from. It might have a little tag on it to tell you the protein and all that stuff, the percentage on the side of that label. But that's it. It's not even a name brand. It's just your feed store has that. The South has that. I heard where you just go to a feed store, it's just a big old bag of chicken feet, no brand, no nothing, and people have been using that for yeah. years. So it all depends. Mm -hmm. um, we had the discussion. How, how you feel about this old so-called fake eggs egg shortage? Uh, yeah, I actually heard about it. I think like in our state, actually, there was like a little um, it was not a little. It was a massive fire in one of the facilities. I think there was like a hundred thousand or something chickens in there, and like the building burned to the ground. I think like there was a on fire. Just happened to catch on fire. I just I, I see yeah. morning. Just happened to catch on fire. Just. Yeah, so, like, chicken eggs here at my part of the state, since I'm in the Northwest Hills, you know, there's a lot of, like, shortages. It's a little harder. It's a little bit more remote. You know, we're up in the hills over here. I went to the store, and there was one dozen eggs of brown eggs, not blue eggs. I know they don't sell it sometimes at the store. You'll find some, like, farmer-owned, like, blue eggs. But 
That's all. But those things go for like eighteen dollars sometimes. You want to know how much I found a dozen eggs at the store for? Nine dollars. And here in my farm, I saw them for three dollars a dozen. I was like, whoa, that's that's really high. I was like, oh, it must be because of that fire. Because you know, hundred thousand chickens. That's a hundred thousand eggs. And if you think about it, a chicken lays an egg about once every day or two. So when you think about it, you're losing tens of millions of dollars worth of like eggs that so, like that building was massive too. Wow. So yeah. All right. So yeah. I don't know if any of you all in the chat heard about that cuz I know it's just causing a massive issue across um across a lot of the US there's been a massive egg shorting shortage and these things cost like 10, 15 dollars a dozen. 18 eggs used to cost like six or seven a dozen. I mean, a half to a dozen and a half. My God, I can't talk. But these things used to cost like dozen, dozen and a half would cost like six or eight dollars. But like now they're costing like seventeen dollars. Yeah. Somebody asked me that question about um, our eggs. Um, did I raise the price on my eggs? I said no. I left my eggs at at the same price my regular customers were getting them. I'm not going up. I'm not going to gouge my customers due to the fact I'm going to keep my customers because. This, this egg raising thing is just to me is it's just either it's man made or it's real real. But it to me is a lot of gouging. Like if they're going up for commercial eggs, like you said, between eight dollars and ten dollars for commercial eggs, you just imagine what you can sell your fresh farm eggs for because fresh farm eggs are, is always a good twenty percent more than what you have in the commercial side. So if, yeah. if the store selling commercial eggs for just say three dollars a dozen, whatever you could get you about eight, seven dollars for yours. You know, like that's the going rate. So we always kept ours at five dollars a dozen. Five dollars a dozen is always the way we did. And um, the reason why I did not raise our egg price because since I'm on your life, I could tell you the story about that. <laughs> because yeah. we see your life. The reason why I do that because over the year before this nonsense happened, our customers always gave us extra money. That's why I was telling people, like, my daughters, when they say if I gave them two dozen eggs, right, that's $10, right? Just the fact that they're young girls with their own little company and business, the people just get to 20, give, give us $20. It was really the eggs were only $10, but they give you the whole 20 Y'all yeah, take that. You know, it's a whole 20 So for yeah. me to be greedy, Technically, whatever I give them now, free eggs, like I already um, um, boxed up free eggs to give them from on top of their own order. Those eggs, technically, when you really think about it on the business sense, not being a greedy business owner, they order whatever they order, and then I give them an extra dozen or two dozen of eggs. Right along with the order. That'll keep them, and then they do what they want to do. If they want to sell it to grow for Hustle for 10 bucks and make their money back, then they can do it. But I just gonna keep my eggs the same price and give you some free eggs. Because yeah. when the prices go back down or, or dip super down, you might lose a customer trying to be greedy. That extra dollar, that extra two dollars, you can lose a customer quickly. But being greedy, I'll take the five all day, every day. And that's it. And, and yeah. you could eggs are going here. Some good, like I said, fresh farm eggs go for about like you said. If they go on for 10, the commercial going for 10, we could get them for 15 now. Because you can always yeah. put it up there, but they ain't, you're going to, customers are going to be like, I ain't spending 15 hours on no darn egg. Even though, yes, it tastes delicious, but you might lose your customers. So keep ours at five. And plus, give them yeah. some. And in the long run, you're going to benefit. You might take a hit, but in the long run, you're going to make it back. That's how you got to yeah. think of it. That's, all. That's my tip to anybody who follows this on the replay or now listen to me about chickens. That's why. That's yeah. what we do. that's what we do with our vegetables. Like a lot of y'all people that's in here gonna listen, they eat their vegetables. Only thing I eat out of my garden is my potatoes, my green peppers, and my hot peppers. Like the hot peppers, I make my own pepper rub. I make our own, you know, spice rub. But like kale, a little collard greens, a little cabbage, and stuff like that. Bracket and stuff. Now my daughters will eat. They fill on the bro on the broccoli that we do. Because one loves broccoli. That's the only reason why we grow broccoli. It's just because one daughter loves broccoli. So once she get her fill of the broccoli, the rest of the broccoli is going to the chickens. It's going to yeah. the rabbits. Now, anything that gets pest jacked up goes to the rabbits. 
Nothing goes to my compost pile. As long as you got rabbits and chickens, nothing had to go to compost pile. I put they poop. So I got I got my own composters where if they eat the lettuce and the stems and they poop it out to chicken poop or rabbit poop and then put it into the compost pile and we good to go. Yeah. yeah. Nothing goes to waste here. Everything get repurposed. All right. So I got to use the bathroom real quick. I'll be back in like two minutes. So yeah, for like a minute or two, you can run the stream. <laughs> a lot of you don't put me up here by myself. Oh man, here we go. Um, yeah, so yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Um, if y'all haven't known, um, so well, talk about myself a little bit since I'm talking. Is that I'm I'm doing um CBD stuff. So if anybody who's following me, um, CBD um tea bags. That's why you see these tea bags. Um, making tea bags for customers. So a lot of people don't want to use actual THC stuff. So I'm doing a whole line of CBD products that's coming out from the oils, peanut brittle, gummies. Uh, I have this product here. Uh, learning the process. This is a company that one of the friends of mine that own. Um, these little things here, these are, you can see these are medicated oils. I'm learning how they show me their production and they have these um, joint capsules. So these are their, this is their company. Um, and they have this one here, the freeze roll on, you know, so, so these are their sample box and they just showing me how to create my own brand. So that's what I've been doing for a lot. You know, when you don't see me on YouTube and I have a couple of people working on me with, uh, the logos and everything else. Since Connecticut became a legal state, that's where business is booming now. So I'm hoping to get in my garden as fast as I can so I can concentrate on the company because at this point, I'm just one employee and that is me. So I might have to have people during the summertime, some of these college kids who are going to be looking for summer jobs. So I might be hiring to take on a few college kids this week, I mean, this year when they're out of school on recess or whatever, that they don't go home for the holidays. To help me um operate the the products and stuff and get the website going and, and, and a lot of things. So there's a lot of things that's behind the scenes that I'm doing. But yeah, and the compost, um, that's gonna be out in the front, front of the yard here. I'm gonna do like everybody does around our way on Saturday morning. They have these what y'all call yard sales and stuff. People put their stuff out there on Saturday and they sit out there. Um might have a problem in front of where I live at. But if I do, the wheels are going to go back on the wagon. I'm going to put the wagon back together because the wagon works. I just took the wheels off. If you see the video, the wheels off the wagon. The wagon works. I took the wheels off because people have been asking me, is it for sale? And when people keep asking for something in your in your yard, is that for sale? Is that for sale? You get multiple people. Is that for sale? You're like, no, it's not for sale. No, it's not for sale. Ten things start to go missing around here. <laughs> They'll ask you, and the next thing you know, you'll get up in the morning, rub your eyes, and your wagon is gone because somebody stole it in the middle of the night and took it because somebody, too many people wanted that wagon. You don't find those those trailers no more. Those are like the old school trailer. I got it from an old guy who was moving to Florida, and he had it in his backyard. All I had to do was bring new tires, and that's what I did. I went and brought new tires on it, and he kept it well, but it had the tires were gone. The tires were dry rotted. And he needed to get off his property because he sold the property. And I went and got it and put new tires on it, brung it down here. And me and the girls painted it a couple of times, but I think I'm going to paint it one more time and um, take it to the farmer's market. So once I get my bags from Amazon and get a custom bag of 10 pounds or 15 pound bags of um, compost bags, yeah, pack it up, pack it in the wagon, put it on the back of the car, take it on a Saturday morning. Me and my girls be sitting out there at the table with my 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 CBD stuff and teas and, and, and sugars and stuff with CBD going by code going through the whole system of what it need to be uh, regulated correctly and sit out there every Saturday and come home probably two three hundred dollars a weekend yeah all right yeah. so I'm about to open up the panel for anyone who wants to come up and discuss their channel I just need to know how to like highlight them because like I know like I've seen in recent days like a lot of people are like clicking on a button and like clicking on a channel and like highlighting them. I don't know how to do that. Do you know how to do that? Oh man, I barely know what I'm doing. 
yeah, so those are the things. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, those are, those are the things I got going on. So the compost, um, compost soil, that's what it says, micros, organics. So micro organics is everything that deals with gardening. So team came together with an icon of a guy with a garden hole, a garden tool with a plant. So it's almost like any other thing. Like when you see this thing behind me, it's a symbol that once you see, I don't have to tell you what it is. You know, it has to do with gardening and, 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 and farming. Just the name, micros, organics. If you see a guy planting, standing there, simple, simple, simple design with a, with a garden tool with, by a plant with mount. So if you have, I probably should put that up there one day. Um, let me see something. Let me see something. The chicken is good at this. So the chicken, hold on for a second. The chicken. I'm gonna open up another tab. Okay, chicken, check your email and maybe you can pull up the new logo so we can explain the logo of the composer. Uh, I'm gonna pull it up real quickly. Yeah. It's, um, no, I, what, I sent your email. All right, I'm gonna check it real quick. All right, here we go. Yep, I see it. I'm gonna quickly. Hang on, I'm, I need to share the screen. I'm sorry, it's taking a little bit here, but I'm gonna yeah. do it. Are you good at that? All right. So here it is. There you go. So when you see the, the, the guy, you see the, the trowel, the toy, I mean the toy, Jesus, the tool, the plant. So when you see micro or, organics, when organic matters, just off the, the tag name, when organic matters, and you see micros, you think of mycorrhizin, organic, you know, soil. Then when you see the guy with uh, the the tool, and it's a simple thing, a circle, a little squeaky line line with a tool, with a plant, you already know it's dealing with gardening. So you don't even have to see micro or, or organics after a while once the brand takes off. If it takes off, lovely. Just the man itself going to let you know it's, it's, it's soil. It has to do with organics. So micros, organics. So the tag was when organic matters. So a lot of people want to, you know, grow organically they don't want to use they don't want to use no um chemicals they want to get away from chemicals they want to get away from uh what you call it um what's the other guy miracle growth everybody talk about miracle growth got chemicals and all that and then, you know people spray pesticides on their plants so there's a lot of little variations of that situation but a lot of people love the organic stuff so on top of that logo where you could go and check my videos, you know that I'm composting my rabbit poop and my chicken poop. So you're going to know it's organically done. So when I talk to people about that, you know, they can actually go ahead and, oh, and see, and they go, and that's how I put my thing up there for now, because I want to advertise my, my company, Micros Organics. It's micro yeah. so at the same time when you cut on my channel you get to see micros organics so if things jump off and in, in walmart or home depot decided to bring that brand or it'll be on amazon if i get enough bagged up i can ship it to amazon to to drop you know what they call it, drop drop shipping so amazon will pick your product and take it to one of their warehouse and you can get it on amazon you can actually get into sell product off of amazon um and you just you can you can, you can bang up the price because you're not gonna be in a I'm not gonna be a big production. That's why I was like, yeah, I can do small bags and, and Amazon, you know, but you know, I don't think I'm big enough for Amazon. But right now, locally in my own local community, yeah, that that'll do. I could be a local organic soil maker and compost maker, so now I, I find some spot not where you at but you know a little below you 
and rent me a lot. Somebody got a lot, I rent a lot, and then I start using other people's um, chicken poop and rabbit poop. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot of land in Connecticut, like every other state, where you can rent the land out and you just say, I just want to compost. So I have people bring me wood chips, um, bring me chicken poop, uh, goat poop, cow manure, all that. Put it there, put a tarp over it, let it bake. And next you know, I don't need a big space. All it needs is what? Probably a quarter of an acre? Not even that. Not even that. A quarter of an acre would do fine, but a quarter of an acre wouldn't be necessary. But a quarter acre property that's just sitting there where somebody just have it and just, hey, just compost right there. Boom. Yeah. So for anyone that's currently coming in, yes, right now at the moment, you can hop on my, hop on the chat because, you know, supporting small channels, trying to support anyone that be there. You know, I'm supporting Microfarmer. I'm supporting OCD's Chick. I'm supporting, like, Casey 55, going with Hudson, you know. Trying to support as many people that help me get up to these milestones as possible. Now, I don't know what y'all, but it's supposed to snow here tonight, it looks like now. Yeah. They're saying just about half an inch for me. Oh, man, you getting nothing. I just can't wait to snow here. Yeah, like, I'm the only person that's waiting for snow. I kid you not. Yeah. And then on Friday night, well, it looks like we're going to have a little bit of fun on Friday. So, yeah, we're going to be getting down to negative nine degrees here on Friday night. It's going to be zero. It's going to be zero here. One day I heard it's going to be zero degrees here. I was like, okay, cool. But, I, you know, for me, for me, like, I know a lot of people don't like the snow. They're like, oh, can you do the snow? For me, I have to get some snow here because maybe it's a mental thing for me. If we don't get snow like we supposed to, at least a good storm, at least one good banger storm down here, then I feel hey, we're going to have a bad spring and a bad summer here because nothing that got killed off, like the cold and the freeze didn't take off, take out a few things that stayed around. I feel with these warm temperatures, if they if it doesn't freeze up the way it's supposed to freeze up, I believe we're going to have a big pest problem. Yeah. There's actually, like, right now, like, in our area, they're, like, actually, like, a, um, I don't know if you know what this is. It's a, I believe it's called a weird noise advisor or something like that. Because, like, you know how, like, quickly, like, like, it's been real warm. It's supposed to be, like, it was actually, like, 51 today. It was 60 okay. on. Um, you talking about the, that, that weird, you said weird weather or weird noises? Weird noises. Because, like, you know, it's going to be real warm. Thursday's going to be 38 here on Friday. It's going to get real cold so quickly that by, like, Friday night. I mean, above freezing Friday morning is just Friday night. It's going to be below freezing and even sub zero. So, like, it's going to get so cold so quickly that, like, when it happens, like, there's going to be, like, you know, like some pockets of moisture when it freezes, it's actually going to sort of like burst out of the ground. And there's going to be a lot of that. So, yeah, if I, I might film a little video about that on Friday night, but I'm going to have to bundle up a lot for that one. So, you, the, button. you say weird noises. Noises? Yeah. Because we had weird noises a little early in the fall. My neighbors asked me, what's that sound? It sounded like what they call in the South, what they call caters. That there was some people didn't hear that sound before, but it did like since I was in Georgia building my home in Georgia, I know it sounded like what they call caters. It's like a that it's like a cricket that rubs the back of the leg. And it just was crazy because that was the sound we never really heard up here. But my neighbors asked, like, you know what that sound is? And then when you talk about weird sounds, I don't know if they're up there where you at now, but it was what I heard in the South, what they call caters. I think they call caters or something like that. They're almost like a locust or some type of type type of bug or something like that. And I know when I was in the South, they were talking about they were they is they caters or something like that. Up here, I think they're called cicadas, but down there, I think I think they can call it caters or cicadas down there. But they make a weird buzzing noise. And weird, like, weird. It was like freakish because they got real loud, uh, like one of the horror floor, like horror movies. Cause the sound was just all over the place, like they were here. Now here goes the catch to that is, was they here mating and then put the eggs in the ground and wherever they put them? And since it's getting, it ain't getting, it's not gonna freeze. So those those lavas are not gonna bust open. So we might have a big population of uh, bugs. But I thought caters don't. I don't know if they every year or every three. What's every three years? I think it's about every three or four years. Yeah, the caters, right? They every three years they come out and mate, whatever that's, and then they go back, whatever. And then every three years you get an explosion of these guys. Now, do yeah. they I don't know if they mess with crops? Because, like I said, down here we never had that, but the noise was here was like crazy. It was eerie. 
people didn't never you know we never had that noise here but i did hear that noise when i was in georgia you know so that's why i had I, that's a cicadas or cicadas whatever they were i was like that's not like a cicada but that don't mean that that was it now you know some stuff came through the through the railways here so we got invasive bugs like the japanese big beetle devastating the trees around here that yeah Jap- we- Orin beetle, something like that, is devastating trees around here. And up here we have, um, we I don't know if you have them, I think they're like ash, emerald ash beetles or something like that. They go into these ash trees, I don't know if you've heard of them before, and they burrow through them, they kill them, and I think we have like 75 or 80 ash trees on our farm that have all died because of those beetles that come through, and they, they're very devastating, and they will like destroy almost anything. Yeah, so it's probably the cousin of the Japanese beetle. The Japanese beetle is black and white. It'll, it's, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. It's excuse me, not right. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful bug, but at the same time, it's just devastating the trees here. Like we'll go through them in a season. Yeah, so, um, so they tell you if you see any Japanese beetle, you probably please contact you with the people, and they're supposed to come and eradicate them or something. Yeah. See them so yeah, that's been going on around here. Like these Japanese beetles, boring beetles, whatever they call them, they have devastated trees. Trees are falling all over the highways. Like sooner high wind comes, new trees are coming down now. So yeah, that's... there's a lot of beetles out there that are gonna go and they're gonna like kill all the trees. So y'all gotta be very careful when it comes to that. So yeah, let's see. There's about eight or nine people in the chat right now. So oh yeah, you got your power. I don't know how long you say it, but I'm good, bro. I just came up to support you, support the small channels, and talk a little bit. So if you want to end it and call it a night and get yeah, ready for school tomorrow, man, you good. Yeah, so if anyone wants to hop up in like the next like five minutes, here's the invite link and you know, like talk a little bit about your channel, introduce yourself, maybe love like a mod, drop your link in the chat because you know we have plenty of mods here that'll help you out doing that because you know I try to support as many channels to make it easy like that as possible. And also a little advertisement here. How about you all sub- subscribe if you haven't? I don't know if you all subscribed to Microfire, but he's actually been doing a new channel. I think it's Love Your Ambition or something like that. Oh, yeah, Love Your Ambition. Um, Love Your Ambition is life hack. I mean, sure. I mean, well, we go at 2 o'clock, so it maybe be like when you're on recess or something like that to bring you up and talk about um, maybe like um, kids dealing with um, issues at school, you know, certain yeah. things. Like- Wrong with kids. That'd be a nice topic. Get a, a young man's view of first year of high school, and you know, uh, yeah, the adjustments of yeah, uh, and farm, then like, farm life as a young man and young, you know, kid as a farm. Like, is it something mm-hmm. that is it for every young person your age, or is just you know you took key to it because your parents? It's for anyone who can like do it, like like anyone who like can handle like at least like going outside constantly, to, like and maybe even loss because you know like a lot of farming is all about dealing with loss and um, working yourself up to the goals. That's what I think of farming a lot. So like because you always have to deal with like farmhouse, you know, especially with chickens because like chickens no. are gonna get like anything out there. So like so yeah, so like you know like for instance like being a young kid, you know, coming up like myself, you know. You don't want to get out there in that cold, like cold, rain, heat. So how was you as a young young guy, young man coming up saying, I still got to go out there even if it is five below zero? Like, I'd rather be in my bed like my neighbor's kids who's going to school this morning. They're getting up at six o'clock to go to school. You bet you up at four o'clock in the morning, tend to, to your flock and stuff in cold, brittle, cold weather. You're cold than us because you up there up there. So as I tell, we have a different climate situation. Yeah. So like, unfortunately, like a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll like make like bold assumptions on you, especially like when you're at like this age. Like, unfortunately, like what a lot of people end up doing is like make massive assumptions that like make like absolutely no sense. So, like, unfortunately, when it comes down to it, like people are at my age, you know, like 13, 16, 13 to sixteen year olds. Unfortunately, when they live on a farm, like people always make assumptions that like. You know, like, they're, like, these types of people that go outside, you know, in very heavy clothes, like, jeans and, like, other stuff like that. And they go outside, they work in the mud, they drive ATVs and, like, mm-hmm. and, like they build massive buildings. Like, you know, especially, like, the massive stereotype with farmers is grain silos. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of those. Like, those are, they're those, like, massive, like, buildings. Yeah. I don't know what they, they look like straight soldiers. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so a lot of people think that like every farm has a grain silo. Well, allow me to introduce you to the chickens homestead where we have no grain silos here. Because uh, you, you don't need them yet. We don't, we're don't. going to get cows in like two or three years for beef and maybe some milk in the future. But like, we don't need the grain silos right now. We we can just like go to the basement, grab some grain for the chickens and ducks. And um, and then grab the honey turning machine to like harvest the honey from our bees. Because I don't know if you know we have bees. Oh, yeah, bees. And then, yeah, and then we also have um, we uh, we also have dogs. We have we actually recently had a cat, a stray cat that was wandering around our farm, and mm. unfortunately, since it was really bad, and she was actually a very friendly cat, like she walked up to us multiple times. We like took her to the doctors, the veterinarian, and we did all like the necessary procedures, you know, when you get a new cat. And we took her in, and she was actually one of the most cuddly cats. I don't know if you saw a short I put out about the yeah, yeah, cat on Friday. But, like, yeah, we got a brand new cat over here. Very, very nice chicken. Uh, not chicken, cat. Probably going to put out a short in a couple, I mean, not a short, a long video in a couple days talking about the cat because, you know, yeah, knowing knowing the cat is going to be, like, because, like, she was originally actually supposed to be the barn cat, but when you realize how friendly that cat actually was, she's actually going to stay in the house now. Yeah. So, yeah, we have two cats now. Okay. Two dogs. About, um, 30 to 80,000 bees. Um, but I think we have 25 chickens in one flock. We actually had 29 last week, and now 25 this week because of the bobcat's been nerfing a lot of uh, them. And then we have 12 chickens in my pet flock, two ducks. We used to have three because, you know, bobcat keeps coming and nerfing these chickens and ducks. So, like, yeah. We what have do you do to bobcats? You know bobcat fur goes for a good, big, nice chunk of change. I would I'm not going to be back. I took care of them to bobcats, man. Yeah. Unfortunately, like, bobcats are, like, protected, so... Trust me, he's gonna be a coat. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they're protected. It's like it's like if you were to like take any action against them, you're gonna find yourself in the back of a police car by the end of the night. So like, I'd recommend not going out there and try to deal with them. But, like try like natural things, like maybe sitting out there, maybe like with like a shotgun or something. Like maybe like make I don't know if it's possible to make like noise with them without like actually having something leave the chamber. I think it's possible to do that with like certain ones. So, like when you do that, like it'll scare it off. But, like, it won't actually harm them. It's sort of, like, a way to, like... It's sort of, like, a way to, like, scare off, like, any, like, nearby predators without causing massive harms. Well, young man, you believe in the honor system. Because I always say this stuff, to, like, when people go out hunting, like, in these rural areas, up you know, where you at in New York, and them like... That's the, what I call the honor system. Like, you know, you say you need to protect it, but, like, if it came across you, like, man, he, he's got to go. I'm just gonna be... Mm -hmm. I ain't, like, I'm gonna lie, he's got to go. That's just gonna be me and nature's mother nature's secret. I'm just gonna be telling you up the truth. Like I can't see myself turning myself in about that, you know? Yeah, like if I was surrounded by bobcats, best believe I'm not gonna like throw little weak punches at them. Like like <laughs> you know, like if someone here just comes up like someone here, like see you can't like, hunt sure. think about the, the yeah. what you're saying, you can't hunt them, but you're protecting your livestock. You have the right to protect your livestock. Yeah, and you sometimes because they attack you. Oh yeah, you so know? not that you if you going out there literally trap them. Yeah, like anything, like you see the deers and white tailed deers that was in my video. They out of season. Yeah. You, they that's why they there. They out of season now. But in case you actually can get you one with a bow and arrow, chances chances are nobody's going to say nothing to you unless you turn yourself in. Yeah, like you just go ahead and just do what you gotta do. Get you a nice good shovel and bury because ain't nobody going in the woods. Nobody's really doing no investigation in that situation. They're not. Yeah. You start being sloppy and leave the trail and you're leaving carcasses out there. Yeah, yeah. Bury the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Bury the stuff. It's just, you know, because I always always wonder how people be honest, like, especially like in Alaska. They're like, oh, we we are hungry and we didn't get an elk this year. The season is gone. Like, dude, don't you know there ain't nobody around you for the the next 60, 60 miles ain't nobody around you. You you on 200 acres of property that there's nobody around you because you see an elk and like, no, they're out of season. But you hungry. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that elk has got to go. He's going to get hit and he's going to get served and he's going to be nice, delicious with a couple of bell peppers and um, some carrots. I, I never understood when I saw those things like, really, like, you, you're hollering about your food supplies going down low. But you're gonna tell me in the show that the elk is out of season. Mm -hmm. But you don't have nothing in your refrigerator. The salmon mm -hmm. run what 
the salmon run wasn't good to you this year, and there's an elk running right across from you. Well, he's out of season. I'm, I think he's going to be seasoned. <laughs> My world. Yeah. It's just facts. I got to survive. Like, yeah, I know, but I'm. there's nobody around you for 100 miles, at least. Hmm. Or more. And when you come down to think about it, like, especially, like, over here, there's, like, a lot of stories, especially from this part of the state, you know, northwestern part of the state, all across the northern rural portions of the state into, like, Massachusetts, a lot of New England. Yeah. There are stories circulating every day of, like, these, like, you know, six, seven-year-olds waiting outside for their bus, and then a raccoon comes out of, like, the trash can and bites them. There's a lot of stories about that. So, like, unfortunately, like, with these little, little children, like, they can't fight yeah, the themselves against, like, a 20-pound yeah, yeah. raccoon. Was it a fox trying to take a kid? A kid down here somewhere near me. A fox got a kid. Oh no, it was a coyote. It was a coyote trying to snatch a kid. It was a small coyote trying to snatch a little girl. She was waiting or coming from the school bus or something like that. And the coyote tried to snatch her up, and the mother went over there and hit, you know, got got the little girl. The little girl had a couple of bites, you know, on her, but she survived. I, I think that was in Fairfield, the town down there. And, yeah. And so they're they here. Like I can say, one comes past my property every night. That's what I say. It's it's what it is. And like I said, I'm I have my dogs. I mean, it ain't like my dog's gonna really beat up a coyote. That's not gonna happen. But uh I already know my dogs will lose that battle. That's not even a lot. I see the coyote, like my dog will just be able to just warn me about something. Like I would hear them fighting it, and then I was gonna come on outside and handle it as a human being, you know what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. my reality, my dog, even the big one and Kate would probably could not take on a, the coyote that comes because the coyote that comes through here is a hybrid. It's a wolf coyote mix. Yeah, we have those up here too. That is big and muscular, and both of my dogs could jump on it and would not win that fight. I already know off the rip, my dogs ain't going to fight. It's not going to happen. The only way that the only way I know a dog will beat that coyote has to be a one of them massive. What do you call them? them Big old dogs and, and killer dogs, they hunt, they, they hunt bears and stuff. Yeah, your average pit bull and your average, um, what do you want to call it? Whatever, uh, extra large American bully and lab and German shepherds has no match for a hybrid coyote and wolf. That baby is you ain't gonna deal with him as a human. The only way you're gonna deal with him is put him to sleep. I've seen one, yeah. I, it comes past you all the time. And I saw to a a while back about the darn thing. And he was like, yeah, they're hybrids. They're, 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 the, the coyotes and wolves are crossbreeding each other. And I'm talking about this thing is built like a tank full muscle. It's bananas how it looks. I would love to catch it on film one day. But like I said, I ain't trying to get attacked by it either. You know what I mean? Yeah. You go about your business and I'll go by mine. But if you come over this fence, you're all mine. <laughs> all my because my girls be out in the backyard my chickens out there my rabbits my dog so if you come over this fence at the time i can see you you all mine so i'm just going to tell people that you know you gotta realize you gotta protect your children but i like the fact that my dogs pee against the fence line and i know that when just like coyotes and everything else when you mark your territory they smell it you know presence of another type of wolf or dog which was both, they tend not to come in your yard especially bobcats and stuff like that so my dogs urinate and feet across the, the fence line so i'm assuming if they come they know they can smell that there's a a canine you know what i mean on a premise mm -hmm. about smell so they know the chances are they're going to encounter a canine now they don't know they ain't going to know if it's a a chihuahua or a lab or a pit bull we just know that they smell some type of canine so that's probably why the bobcats don't jump that little four foot fence and be in my yard looking at the chicken coop um because they, because the dog actually across the fence line actually use the fence line as as they which one is called marking spots yeah so that's probably why i don't get raccoons and stuff that comes in my yard lately due to the yeah. fact Dogs pee around the fence line, so it's like they're knocking any territory. Yeah. And unfortunately, I do have to go tonight right. because like, okay. I have a little bit of work to do. So, yeah, man, um, you, got, you got your hour, you got your hour and a half. Uh, get on gig, man. I guess I come up yeah. here. Take care, man. All right, congratulations. All right. Man. Hope to see you by the next two months, man. Two G's, man. Two K, yeah. Your way, you're in your way. Right. Your way.
day, bro. Yeah. All right, bye, right, right, Safe one. Stay, take care, and stay safe, and be diligent about yourselves. All right. All right, bye, everyone. All right, so if you didn't enjoy the video, I have a video right for you on the screen. This is the one that YouTube thinks you will enjoy the most. It's right in the middle of the